Hello, and thank you for joining me today to learn a little bit more about the Human and Organizational Development Capstone Program at Vanderbilt University. I'm delighted to share with you some of the highlights and the process that students work through to land their HOD Capstone opportunities, what it actually looks like when they are engaged in their Capstone immersion, and then end finally with some really great stories that students will share about the impact that they've had on their Capstone sites. So just to start, I think it's really helpful to ground ourselves with the, the purpose of what human and organizational development is all about. This is the largest undergraduate major at Vanderbilt University, and it is designed to prepare our students for a successful career focused on creatively developing data-driven and research-grounded contributions to human problems in organizations and communities. And I'm really proud to say that this is the longest running immersion program at Vanderbilt. The very first graduating class graduated in 1986. And I wanna start with a story or better a letter that one of our founding faculty members shared with the very first graduating class in 1986. Dr. Bob Ennis wrote this and distributed it to all of the graduates of the 1986 class. Congratulations on being part of the first graduating class from the Human Development Program, what it was known then. I wanted to give each of you a small gift that would express my affection for you and serve as a meaningful reminder of your peers in the program. I decided to give you this, a copy of a Chinese symbol that I showed you in class during your sophomore year. This is the Chinese symbol for crisis. It's made up of two symbols, the symbol for danger and the symbol for opportunity. I try to teach my students that a crisis is a dangerous opportunity, but I must admit that it's really hard to remember that when I'm having a crisis myself. So I thought this symbol might help you see the opportunity in some future crisis. I will miss you all. The first group will always have a special place in my memory. Francis and I would like, like it if you would keep us informed about where you are and what you're doing. I'd especially like to know if you're looking for a job or if you're interested in hiring a human development graduate. It won't be long before you're hiring rather than looking. Thank you for making these last four years so much fun for me. And I always like to start telling about the Capstone uh, program with this letter and this story, because I think the themes that you see in this letter are still true today. We still have the immersion experience and we still have a great sense of community in our program. And we are uh, moving forward each step of the way, navigating all kinds of crisis as we have done in the past couple of years, especially. The, uh, so a lot has really changed since 1986 in terms of um, making adjustments to our coursework. However, some things have not. Um, what's remained intact um, are the core classes that our students all have to engage in starting their first semester in human and organizational development. All of our students are required to uh, take and complete human Applied Human Development, better known as 1250 to our students. You may hear your students talking about all these numbers and what in the world that means. 1250 is Applied Human Development. Then they navigate through small group behavior, HOD 1300. And then in their sophomore year, they take Understanding Organizations and Talent Management and Organizational Fit, or better known as 21 and 2400. And then finally, at uh, the end of their sophomore year, sometimes the start of their junior year, they're finishing up their core classes, HOD 2500, Systematic Inquiry, and HOD 2700, Public Policy. And I just like to share this groundwork because these are prerequisites. This really allows the, uh, the students to see the foundational core of what our program is all about then they are ready to launch into what you came here um, to watch and learn a little bit more about, which is what we refer to their HOD capstone design semester. And you may be looking at these crazy quirky terms and thinking, what in the world are my students getting into? Well, I'm going to give you an example of which, what each of these mindsets represents for your students during their design semester. So they engage in a semester long process called their HOD capstone design process. And this comes after they've completed the core classes that I just introduced you to. 
And the most important things that we hope that the students walk away from is the ability to use these mindsets over and over again, each time they're navigating their career, job, professional pursuits, um, long after they leave HOD. So how do we do this in the design semester? They're enrolled in an online class, Brightspace. You may have heard about this electronic platform that they all have classes in. And the students are empathizing with one another. They're meeting with HOD coaches uh, through their semester long process to help them figure out what is it that I really want to do for my capstone experience. We have capstone connection events where we bring in employers for them to hear stories. We have um, weekly coffee chats, which you can learn a lot more about on our blog, um, where employers come on and talk about uh, what it's like to be a HOD capstone intern with their um, particular organizations. So it's a great opportunity to empathize and learn from each other for a full long semester process. We embrace a lot of ambiguity. Um, so we encourage students to pick three organizations that they may want to apply to for their capstone design semester and say, you know what? pick one that's completely outside the box and apply to the Nashville Predators or apply to the Country Music Hall of Fame and see what you learn from that process. And so we are really encouraged to think outside the box and get outside their comfort zone. They have to use a great deal of creative confidence in this process. They develop marketing tools, resumes, cover letters, write stories about how their earlier HOD coursework is helping prepare them for their capstone semester and they have to really be okay with failure. So this is a lifelong lesson that they take with them. They may not get their first choice. We don't place them in organizations. They learn from the process of interviewing with employers, getting feedback. Sometimes they decide that that's not the best fit after they've decided, mm, I had the interview, the conversation, I'm gonna move on, maybe that didn't go well, or I gotta know because the position was already filled or someone else is going to be taking that for their capstone. We test and iterate a lot in the capstone design semester. So again, your student partners closely with the HOD coach to help them figure out the best plan to regroup, to maybe update their marketing materials, but ultimately lean into this whole process with what we refer to as optimism. So remaining positive that you have a lot of choices to make in your capstone design semester. And the six cities that you see here are cities that represent where we have pre-existing relationships. So students really like reading about where have our students been in the particular cities that you see here, Nashville, DC, New York, London, Chicago, and San Francisco. They can actually find contact information for employers that we have had students to work with in the past in these cities. Um, but the great thing is they're not limited to these particular relationships. They can design their own way forward, which is why, again, we lean into those mindsets so heavily. And we talk a lot about what it looks like to be a capstone site. Um, how many hours a week can you be there? 28 hours a week. It will it run the full semester of your of your coursework? Can you come to class on Mondays? Well, you have a supervisor that's there to engage in um, feedback constructive and positive, to have a really good mentor. And so the HOD Capstone Office really helps the students to figure out what's going to be the best plan forward. But students really like leaning into these pre-existing relationships, and I always like to make note of these. They can read site assessments or site reviews from former students, so they really like learning from one another. Hence, that whole idea of community that I introduced you to at the start of this conversation um, with the letter from Dr. Ennis. So um, a lot of what I've mentioned now is po posted on our website and I hope you'll take a few minutes to visit. I do not have enough time in this short presentation to talk about all the amazing resources that we have developed over the past several years that help students navigate their design um, uh, experience. So that's one co key component is making sure that they are successful in that. That's what our office does. Then finally, they're gonna find something, right? They're gonna work this full semester to design what they want it to look like. Then the following semester, they actually do the capstone. So what does this look like? As I mentioned earlier, we are Vanderbilt's oldest immersion learning experience. This does count for our uh, students' immersion requirement at Vanderbilt. We're really thankful that we have a program that has this built into our curriculum. 
and it really allows your student to apply what they've learned in their earlier coursework to an immersion setting, to an organization, to a research lab, whatever it is that they have designed their way forward. They partner with the organization for 28 hours a week, and that can look very different depending on what site that they are with. Maybe that's the traditional Monday through Friday, sometimes it's weekends, but they work that out with the employer. The other thing is they do come to class. They come to class on Mondays. This is what makes this experience very different than most vocational internships, is it's academic by nature. So the students are earning coursework, 12 credit hours in the summer or 15 credit hours if they choose to do it in the fall or spring. They are earning grades, and I'll show you that, <clears throat> what that looks like in just a second. But just to restate, this is process in this semester is eligible to the students that are rising juniors and seniors that have completed their coursework and worked with our office closely through their design process. So that's how we know that they're ready. Once enrolled in their capstone semester, I know this is, looks like a lot, which it is. Um, and we like to make the point that this is different. This is an academic immersion. This is not a vocational internship. The students are actually enrolled in coursework. Um, 4950, that is really all about the field experience, where it is a pass-fail class. However, it's heavily linked to their ability to engage with their site 28 hours a week, receiving performance evaluations from their supervisors, and making contributions um, on, a, on a weekly basis to whatever it is that they have decided to do for their immersion. The other classes that you see listed here, 4951, 4952, and 4953. So that critical reflection, the self-directed learning, the systems thinking, and the students designing and, and leaving behind an analysis and contribution. Those are the three classes that we talk about in our Monday seminar. So while they may look like three very different classes here, and they do receive three different grades, that's what we talk about in our coursework on our Monday class sessions. Um, and all of this comes to life. They're able to learn from each other. Again, community component of HOD. That's what it's really all about. The ability to stop, pause, reflect on what you're learning. So a few of us actually get to have the opportunity to do that. And that's what we think is really special about the design of this experience. And then I think that this is a really powerful visual to show that no matter what, where um, our students go and what they do with their capstone, at the end, they walk away with these abilities. And these are the abilities that transcend across all industries. And that's what makes our program so unique. One of the many things I think, you have to use these abilities no matter what you decide to do with your life and your relationships, you'll use these abilities. Again, our, um, the opportunity to communicate deliberately. So working one-on-one -on -one with the supervisor on a weekly basis to receive feedback and to learn from that. That is a powerful skill set that not many students get to engage in um, over the course of their undergraduate experience. To experiment rapidly, so try some things out, design a project, maybe get some constructive feedback, have to iterate and design something different to navigate that ambiguity, to learn from all kinds of different personalities, learning from others, and then synthesizing information. So they're synthesizing everything that they've learned in their core HOD classes and applying it to this capstone immersion. So I do not do this program um, justice. <laughs> I think that the, the stories on our capstone blog that's what really speaks volumes. It's all about hearing and hearing from our capstone partners. So please I encourage you to go to our capstone blog, listen to the, the stories that our supervisors say about the impact that the students have on their organizations, about the contributions that they make. Listen to the community that this program is all about. And you see a few visuals here of some of the fun events that we have that I told you about in the, um, capstone design semester, but we record them and then we post them on our capstone blog. So please take a minute and listen to our partners, see what this is all about and hear from our alumni. So many of our alumni, they want to give back in a meaningful way to the capstone program. And so they come on Wednesday mornings and they share, how did HOD prepare you to do what you do? 
Um, and you can really do anything with HOD. <laughs> Another great thing about this program, and you will see that in the Capstone um, Coffee Chats, people from all different um, industries living all over the world telling their story about how HOD helped them to get to where they are today. And then finally, who better to hear this story from than the actual students? So the people that go out and live this experience. And now what I'm gonna do is pause and allow you to actually hear the stories of three of our Capstone students, a little bit about what they did for their, um, their semester, their semester immersion Capstone, um, the contributions that they made to their sites and the, the outcomes and who that they thank. It's a really powerful, powerful story. So I'm gonna turn it over to them for a few minutes to let you watch. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Mason and this year I worked with a consulting company that specializes in nonprofit consulting called LeafSpring. Before getting into what my capstone is, I wanted to take a small second to do a thought experiment to understand why it's important. Let's say you are a nonprofit leader or a nonprofit board member, and there's this big 5K fundraiser coming up and it generates most of the revenue for your organization. Well, let's say you have a year to plan it. That sounds like plenty of time, right? However, you're on a nonprofit board, which means maybe you meet once a month for two hours. This means in actuality, you've got 24 hours to figure out all of the logistics of a really crucial fundraiser. This is where LeafSpring comes in. We make sure that the nonprofit leaders and your nonprofit board are running at the most efficient, that way your organization can have the most impact it possibly can have. And at the beginning of the summer, we made sure to sit down and do a analysis of the market to figure out how I could fit my capstone project into this dynamic and Leaf Springs mission. So looking at kind of the strengths and weaknesses of the situation, there was plenty of opportunities for online growth and for reshaping how we really think of consulting for nonprofits. There was also plenty of connections in the system and expertise on Mary's side, but time constraints are a big deal. When you're running a one-man show, you don't always have the time to sit down and focus on not doing what you need to do to keep your company running. Um, and taking time to create these content packages, which is what we decided to do, I'll get to how we decided that later, um, takes a lot of time. So once I was able to complete the systems research to better understand the components of the market space we were working in, and we decided on the project, we ran through a couple uh, prototypes and finally ended at a solid uh, place with what we decided to call content packages. I ended up working and completing the first kind of final draft of two of these contact, content packages, building a better board and board order, orientation. And this consists of 18 PowerPoints, over 90 slides in total, and one absolutely amazing summer where I was able to build lesson plans using Mary's knowledge and learning quite a bit myself to allow nonprofit organizations to buy the specific lessons that they need. That way they can have quick and easy access to information and guidance without having to spend all the time for a consultant. I am going to walk you through now some of our uh, thoughts, processes behind these content packages. Thank you all so much for listening. Hey there, my name is Ken Patel and I'm going to be sharing my screencast on learning through experience. So what did I do this summer? I worked in Bank of America's consumer and retail investment banking team and one of the companies that I got to cover was Nike. Uh, the support system I had was great. I had a junior and senior mentor, Jay Lee and Blake Hallinan. And then Ali Mancusa was, was instrumental in, in communicating you know, via phone, via email. Um, it was all very smooth. What contributed to my professional growth this summer? I think the key thing was I got to work on live deal processes. So things that are going on in the current markets. Um, I got to also work with a large cap client like Nike and see what their senior management team was thinking, what senior bankers were thinking from a high level strategy perspective. And so I really got to feel like I was 
you know, living the, the life of what, um, you know, if I get a, uh, end up being, you know, full-time offer, what my life would look like in the future. So in HOD, we take these like six core classes, uh, you know, over the span of two, three, four years. And we kind of culminate this with the HOD capstone internship. Um, it's a way of really applying the coursework to a real life setting um, and, you know, making that all come to life. In terms of the systems approach, I think interviews and challenge maps are, are things that you take uh, before you notice a problem in an in a organization. Um, they're things that, you know, you're gathering field research, you're gathering field notes, um, and then the solutions landscape, impact gaps and leverage points are really ways to kind of, you know, poke at, you know, first of all, notice a problem in, a, in an organization, you know, how can I fix it? What sort of uh, leverage do I have in this sense? In terms of my summer project, um, you can see two prototypes on the left culminating into a final product on the right. Uh, you know, I, I, I had to work with a lot of uh, non-public information and so it was hard to kind of, you know, navigate that. But I, I think, you know, essentially what I did is Nike reports their quarterly earnings. And so really setting them up for a uh, September management uh, meeting with Bank of America to explore strategic opportunities. The four things that I really carried from this class, uh, communication, forming relationships, putting oneself in other shoes and, and just listening to others. I think all these were stressed in, in, their, in our Monday morning uh, meetings uh, for class and are really core to the human design process. And then just, you know, day one to now, I think uh, two things that really pop out are, are just being a lifelong thinker and a problem solver um, throughout this internship as well as, you know, beyond. And then I really just uh, paying attention to current events. Um, I developed a, a passion for learning about what's going on in the markets. And uh, it was great to put that to use in the internship. Thank you. Hi, my name is Melody Sin, and I worked as a summer intern for the research development team at Boys and Girls Clubs of Middle Tennessee. Here's a quote that inspired me greatly during this summer. We make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. The reason why I shared this quote with you was because it directly relates to why I chose to spend my summer at BGCMT. I always had an inspiration for making a difference in the society with the things I do, and I always wanted to give back to the community as I would not have been able to stand where I am today without the help I had received. I also wanted to help the community. Next, I'd like to share my experience at BGCMT. First, I'd like to mention Jocelyn, Jennifer, and Eric for guiding me through the whole summer and being such a huge role model and an inspiration for me. These three people have made the greatest impact on my professional growth this semester by teaching me both in-office and out-of-office skills. I'd also like to thank the other interns and office staff members as they are a great joy to work with. Next up is learning goals reflection. I had set my initial goal as to achieving proficiency in Salesforce for data entry, Microsoft Excel for data analysis, and Microsoft Quarrel for advanced options such as mail merge and creating template. Here are some of the graphs from the data analysis I've conducted from the donor stats from 2016 through 2020, where this information could be used to enhance donor engagement for the organization. To reflect on the experience I've had, I'd first like to share that ambiguity was such a huge part of my summer. This was one of the biggest lessons and challenges that I have dealt with from the coursework, and I have finally learned to be okay with ambiguity and learned to navigate it. It helped me tremendously in navigating my systems research as well, and allowed me to plan accordingly and test out things from building prototypes to finalizing my project one by one to the next steps. Biggest impact of this internship on my career would be on my skills. I've achieved proficiency in my learning goals for office skills, and I've also been taught valuable life lessons and inspirations. I have found a drive for the purpose that I seek, and I have found a passion for my future. Compared to the first day of internship, I have become a totally different person, and I am happy to share that all of the changes that my internship has brought with will greatly impact my future and career. 
I would not have been able to imagine the person I am today on my first day. Thank you. This concludes my presentation. So thank you so much for joining, um, for listening. I hope that you enjoyed hearing Aaron and Kenner and Melody recap their experiences about what they learned and what they gained from the HOD capstone immersion. There are many more stories on our website and please do not hesitate to email us at hod.capstone at vanderbilt.edu. I know there's no possible way that I was able to answer all the questions here today, but hopefully it just scratches the surface to tell you about what an amazing opportunity that the capstone program provides um, the students at Vanderbilt. Thank you so much.